brains and bird sense are the outstanding qualities of the handsome black and tan Gordon Setter. The Gordon's lineage dates back over two centuries to these beautiful, rugged, heathered hills of Scotland. Popular among Scottish hunters for decades, this sporting breed came into prominence during the late 1700s here at Gordon Castle. In the United States, today's Gordon Setter is a product of decades of purposeful breeding, focused on preserving the distinctive breed characteristics which set the Gordon apart from the other setters. The following 40-year chronology highlights some of the many Gordon Setters who have contributed to the breed's recognition and many that have been essential in maintaining breed type. There are many examples of Gordon Setters in this show. Some are outstanding, some are not. All of them can aid your understanding. General impression. The Gordon Setter is a good-sized, sturdily built, black and tan dog, well-muscled, with plenty of bone and substance, but active, upstanding, and stylish, appearing capable of doing a full day's work in the field. He has a strong, rather short back with well-sprung ribs and a short tail. The head is fairly heavy and finely chiseled. His bearing is intelligent, noble, and dignified, showing no signs of shyness or viciousness. These dogs possess desirable Gordon Setter head qualities. Clear colors and straight or slightly waved coat are correct. He suggests strength and stamina rather than extreme speed. Symmetry and quality are most essential. A dog well balanced in all points is preferable to one with outstanding good qualities and defects. A smooth, free movement with high head carriage is typical. The Gordon Setter's bone and substance, moderately sloping top line, and characteristic headpiece make for instant recognition of true Gordon Setter type. These features, along with the distinctive black and tan coloring and overall square outline, distinguish the Gordon from the English and Irish Setter size and weight. Females, 23 to 26 inches, 45 to 70 pounds. Males, 24 to 27 inches, 55 to 80 pounds. Animals that appear to be over or under the prescribed weight limits are to be judged on the basis of confirmation and condition. Extremely thin or fat dogs should be discouraged on the basis that under or overweight hampers the true working ability of the Gordon Setter. The weight to height ratio makes him heavier than other setters. Overall balance is more important than actual size and weight. Head. The head is deep rather than broad, with plenty of brain room. A nicely rounded, good sized skull, broadest between the ears. Excessive width between the ears distorts the balance of this dog's head. Compare it with this dog's nicely balanced head. The head should have a clearly indicated stop. This dog has a poor stop. Below and above the eyes should be lean, and the cheek as narrow as the leanness of the head allows. The muzzle is fairly long and not pointed, either as seen from above or from the side. This muzzle is too short. This attractive head is too short, although the muzzle and skull are equal in length. Blues should not be pendulous. This Gordon is too lippy. Here, there is not enough flu. The nose should be broad with open nostrils and black in color. The muzzle is the same length as the skull from occiput to stop and the top of the muzzle is parallel to the line of the skull extended. The lip line from the nose to the flues shows a sharp, well-defined, square contour. An impression of strength and squareness constitute correct Gordon Setter head type. The square contour of the lip line, coupled with a definite stop dividing equal and parallel head planes, contribute to this impression. Non-parallel planes Poorly defined stops and snipey muzzles are incorrect. Eyes. A fair size, 
neither too deep set nor too bulging, dark brown, bright, and wise. The shape is oval rather than round. The lids should be tight. Light eyes or incorrectly shaped eyes, which distort Gordon Setter expression, are undesirable, as are drooping haws. Ears. Set low on the head, approximately on line with the eye, fairly large and thin, well folded, and carried close to the head. Too high or too low an ear set can distort Gordon Setter expression. Soft spaniel expression is undesirable. It has been said that the Gordon should give the appearance of a Scotsman counting his change at the marketplace. Teeth. The teeth should be strong and white and preferably should meet in front in a scissors bite with the upper incisors slightly forward of the lower incisors. A level bite is not to be considered a fault. Pitted teeth from distemper or allied infections should not be penalized. Undershot bites are undesirable. Correct Gordon Setter head type is of paramount importance to overall assessment of type and quality and to breed identification. Head type should make for instant recognition. This is a Gordon. Neck. Long, lean, arched to the head and without throatiness. Shoulders. Should be fine at the points and lying well back, giving a moderately sloping top line. As seen here and here, but this top line is too high. This top line slopes too much, while this dog has been set up stretched out too far. These acceptable top lines might be just a fraction too level and just a bit too sloping. The slight break in this dog's top line behind the withers is not desired, nor is the roach seen here. The tops of the shoulder blades should be close together. When viewed from behind, the neck appears to fit into the shoulders in smooth, flat lines that gradually widen from neck to shoulder. It should be noted that the distance between the shoulder blades is in relation to the overall size of the dog and balanced with well-sprung ribs. The area between the tips of the shoulder blades should be well filled to ensure adequate strength and flexibility so that the dog can set on a point with style and stamina. Four quarters. The legs should be big boned, straight and not bowed, with elbows free and not turned in or out. This dog's left elbow is out. The angle formed by the shoulder blade and upper arm bone should be approximately 90 degrees when the dog is standing, so that the foreleg is perpendicular to the ground. The pasterns should be straight chest, deep and not too broad in front, the ribs well sprung, leaving plenty of lung room. The chest should reach to the elbows. A pronounced forechest should be in evidence. Correct chest depth is easily viewed on this young dog who lacks mature coat. Full coat may obscure the chest's actual depth. Body. The body should be short from shoulder to hips and the distance from the forechest to the back of the thigh should approximately equal the height from the ground to the withers. The loins should be short and broad and not arched. The loins on these dogs are correct. The croup is nearly flat with only a slight slope to the tail head. This dog's croup falls away too steeply. Hindquarters. The hind legs from hip to hock should be long, flat, and muscular. The hock to heel, short and strong. The stifle and hock joints are well bent and not turned either in or out. When the dog is standing with the hock perpendicular to the ground, the thigh bone should hang downward parallel to an imaginary line drawn upward from the hock. This example has insufficient definition at the stifle joint. Here the desired nearly level croup provides adequate area for thigh muscle attachment, giving the muscle width so necessary for stamina. The inside thigh muscles should be as well developed as the outer thigh muscles to provide balance in the muscle groups propelling the rear quarters. Excessive rear angulation, as well as overly bent sickle hocks, 
are undesirable because they reduce strong fluid rear movement by inhibiting the follow-through hock action. Frequently, Gordons are set up unnaturally wide behind. This dog has set itself up naturally. The handler wants more width, but this is better with a hock set beneath the hips, forming a perpendicular line from the hips to the ground. Feet. The feet should be formed by close-knit, well-arched toes with plenty of hair between, with full toe pads and deep heel cushions. Feet should not be turned in or out. Feet should be cat-like in shape. These feet are too flat, and these are hair feet. Both are incorrect. Tail. Short and should not reach below the hocks, carried horizontal or nearly so. Thick at the root and finishing in a fine point. The feather, which starts near the root of the tail, should be slightly waved or straight having triangular appearance, growing shorter uniformly toward the end. The placement of the tail is important for correct carriage. If the croup is nearly flat, the tail must emerge nearly on the same plane as the croup to allow for horizontal carriage. When the angle of the tail bends too sharply at the first coccygeal bone, the tail will be carried too gaily or will droop. The tail placement should be judged in its relationship to the structure of the croup. Temperament. The Gordon Setter should be alert, gay, interested, and aggressive. He should be fearless and willing, intelligent and capable. He should be loyal and affectionate, and strong-minded enough to stand the rigors of training. The term aggressive refers to Gordon intensity in the field and in no way relates to aggressive or vicious behavior toward other dogs or people. Gait. The action of the Gordon Setter is a bold, strong, driving, free-swinging gait. The head is carried up and the tail flags constantly while the dog is in motion. When viewed from the front, the forefeet move up and down in straight lines so that the shoulder, elbow, and pastern joints are approximately in line with each other. When viewed from the rear, the hock, stifle, and hip joints are approximately in line. Thus, the dog moves in a straight pattern forward without throwing the feet in or out. This dog is moving poorly. She is crabbing. The hocks are too close and crossing. Her elbows are out, causing the feet to toe in. When viewed from the side, the forefeet are seen to lift up and reach forward to compensate for the driving hindquarters. The hindquarters reach well forward and stretch far back, enabling the stride to be long and the drive powerful. Now let's watch these dogs in slow motion. The overall appearance of the moving dog is one of smooth flowing, well-balanced rhythm in which the action is pleasing to the eye, effortless, economical, and harmonious. Contributing factors to the poor movement seen here are angulation imbalance, fore and aft, roach over the loin, and incorrect croup angle. Coat should be soft and shining, straight or slightly waved, but not curly, with long hair on ears, under stomach, and on chest, on back of the fore and hind legs, and on the tail. As an upland game bird hunter, the Gordon Setter is exposed to dense cover, complete with burrs and thistles. 
Incorrect texture and excessive length of coat and furnishings impairs the dual purpose of this sporting dog and should be discouraged. Color and markings. Black with tan markings, either of rich chestnut or mahogany color. Black penciling is allowed on the toes. The penciling seen here is acceptable. However, here there is excessive black. The borderline between black and tan colors should be clearly defined. The line between the black and tan on this dog's hocks is not defined clearly enough. There should not be any tan hairs mixed in the black. The tan markings should be located as follows. One, two clear spots over the eyes and not over three quarters of an inch in diameter. This dog has excessive tan over the eyes. Two, on the sides of the muzzle. The tan should not reach to the top of the muzzle, but resembles a stripe around the end of the muzzle from one side to the other. This dog has excessive tan facial markings. Note the tan on the top of the muzzle. Compared to this dog, and this one, who have the desired black running the entire length of the top of the muzzle. Three, on the throat. Four, two large clear spots on the chest. Five, on the inside of the hind legs showing down the front of the stifle and broadening out to the outside of the hind legs from the hock to the toes. It must not completely eliminate the black on the back of the hind legs. Six, on the forelegs from the carpus or a little above downward to the toes. Seven, around the vent. Although not as readily visible, this is entirely acceptable. Eight, a white spot on the chest is allowed, but the smaller, the better. Predominantly tan, red, or buff dogs, which do not have the typical pattern of markings of a Gordon Setter, are ineligible for showing and undesirable for breeding. Although not a disqualifying fault, predominantly black Gordons, like this one, who lack sufficient tan markings are incorrect. It has taken a long time to explain correct color and markings, but remember the key features of Gordon Setter type are one, good-sized, sturdily built, well-muscled, with plenty of bone and substance. Weight to height ratio makes the Gordon heavier than the other setters. Two, square outline. Three, Head fairly heavy, finely chiseled, deep rather than broad. Four, back short and strong with a nearly flat croup and only moderately sloping top line. The scale of points may be helpful in placing proper emphasis on desired qualities of the breed's physical makeup. Scale of points, head and neck, including ears and eyes, 10. Body, 15. Shoulders, four legs, four feet, 10. Hind legs and feet, 10. Tail, five. Coat, eight. Color and markings, five. Temperament, 10. Size, general appearance, 15. Gait, 12. Total, 100. The judge's task is to analyze a class in terms of the qualities called for in the standard. If you had to judge these setters, what would you do? Which of these Gordons most closely resembles the ideal described in the standard? The one that does is placed first. As a judge, you must know the standard and be able to apply it in the ring. This presentation is an aid to your understanding. To really learn the breed, you must continually study and observe as many Gordon setters as possible.